This story is about how even the most hopeless case can be solved after decades. Pamela Malone, a 19-year-old student, disappeared from Indiana State University on the evening of September 15, 1972. The next day, her lifeless body was discovered in her own car. At first, the police had no clues and no understanding of who could have committed the crime. But after 47 long years, the identity of the killer was finally revealed to the world. This case demonstrates the importance of perseverance, the role of new forensic technology, and the impact of relentless investigation. Before we dive into this story, I would like to ask you to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell icon. Your support will help us continue making high-quality content that brings real stories to light. Sad statistics show that many murders remain unsolved when there is a lack of evidence, no witnesses, and no clear suspects. In such cases, finding the culprit can become nearly impossible. Sometimes, innocent people are wrongfully convicted, but more often, these cases simply go cold. Occasionally, however, justice is served, even after many years. While it can never bring the victim back, identifying the criminal at least provides closure for the victim's family and friends, allowing them to finally find peace. This is exactly what happened in the case of Pamela Malone. Pamela Malone was a 19-year-old student at Indiana State University, located in Terre Haute, Indiana. She had recently become an English teacher, and her future seemed bright. However, her life was tragically cut short on a fateful evening in September 1972. That night, students gathered in a dormitory at the university. Pamela lived with her parents and younger sister at their home in Terre Haute, so she would typically visit the dormitory only to socialize with friends before returning home. On the evening of September 15th, Pamela left the dormitory to park her car for some of her friends. She told them she would return in a few minutes. Tragically, she was never seen alive again. At first, no one suspected anything unusual. Her friends assumed she had simply gone home. However, when Pamela didn't show up for work the next morning, her parents became worried. Pamela had always been incredibly responsible, and it was uncharacteristic of her to miss work. Her friends began to notice her car, which was parked just one block from the dormitory, but something was off. Pamela's glasses were lying on the dashboard. Pamela had poor eyesight, and she could never go anywhere without her glasses. This raised immediate concern among her friends and family. Her friends contacted Pamela's parents, and after a while, her father and younger sister arrived at the scene with spare keys to her car. It was a mistake for them to investigate the car on their own. The police should have been contacted right away, as there was a risk of disturbing potential evidence. Unfortunately, when Pamela's father opened the trunk, he made the heartbreaking discovery of her lifeless body. She had been covered in dirt, and there were no signs of life. This tragic event not only shocked Pamela's family but also left the entire university community in disbelief. The police launched an investigation into Pamela's death but they could not find any useful evidence or witnesses. They reconstructed the events of that night and tried to identify potential suspects, but they hit a dead end. Pamela had only been gone for a few minutes, and it seemed as though the unknown criminal had been waiting for her. The police had no answers. Was the killer someone she knew, or was it a random attack? These questions remained unanswered, and the investigation struggled to make progress. Over time, the first suspect in the case emerged, Robert Wayne Austin. Austin had been arrested previously for attacking several students at the university, and his violent behavior made him a prime suspect in Pamela's case. However, despite the apparent coincidence of his previous crimes and the timing of Pamela's murder, the police could not find any concrete evidence linking Austin to the crime. After exhausting all possibilities, Austin was cleared as a suspect, and the case was once again put on the back burner. Years passed, and the case went cold. But in 2008, a new sheriff named Sean Keane took over the department. He was determined to solve the mystery of Pamela Milome's death. Keene was young and ambitious, and he was passionate about solving real crimes, not just shuffling through paperwork. He decided to take a fresh look at the case, and his investigation soon became a personal mission. 
He even took the case files home with him after work, studying them late into the night. The first thing Keen did was to retest the DNA samples that had been collected in 1972. He compared the samples with Robert Wayne Austin's DNA, but there was no match. This ruled out Austin as the killer once and for all. However, Keen wasn't ready to give up. He believed the answer could still be found, so he made the bold decision to send the evidence to a leading laboratory specializing in genetic testing. In 2019, after conducting a thorough DNA analysis, the breakthrough finally came. Keen and his team were able to use genetic genealogy to trace the DNA to a man named Jeffrey Hahn. Hahn had passed away years earlier, but his family's DNA provided the key to unlocking the case. Hahn had been 23 years old at the time of the crime, and he had lived in Terre Haute. He worked as a delivery driver traveling between two states and had been familiar with the university campus. At the time of the murder, Han was about the same age as many of the students at Indiana State University, making him an unassuming figure. Although Han had not been on the radar of law enforcement at the time, it quickly became clear that he was not a stranger to violence. Han had attacked a married couple a year later in a robbery gone wrong. He had killed the man and nearly succeeded in escaping, but the wife managed to escape and call for help. The police quickly apprehended Han but he was declared insane by the courts and sent to a psychiatric facility. After just two years, he was released and he went on to commit further violent crimes. While the case was finally solved, there were still many questions left unanswered. Han had a long history of violent behavior, and his mental illness played a significant role in his actions. It's difficult to say how many other crimes he may have committed, but his actions in the years following Pamela's murder suggest a pattern of predatory behavior. The case serves as a grim reminder of the importance of understanding and addressing mental health issues, as well as the potential dangers of releasing individuals who may pose a threat to society. In the end, Pamela Malone's family finally received the closure they had waited nearly five decades for. The discovery of the killer brought justice, but it also raised difficult questions about the justice system and how certain crimes slip through the cracks. This case serves as a powerful reminder that even the most hopeless of cold cases can be solved, and that justice, no matter how delayed, can still be served. The story of Pamela Malone is a testament to the power of persistence and the importance of new forensic technologies. It shows us that even in the absence of evidence, there is always hope that the truth will eventually come to light. While the past cannot be undone, the killer was brought to justice, and Pamela's family could finally breathe a sigh of relief. Thank you for watching.